research labs around the world are working on brain implants like Neuralink, and some of these labs work in close contact with Neuralink itself. Here is how one of them is making progress. Recently, Neuralink demonstrated how a monkey can play Pong by simply using brain commands. What is fascinating about the event, is not so much that the monkey can use brainwaves to communicate with a computer, but the fact that she can do it with a technology, that is not invasive. Humans have been able to play computer games with their mind, for quite a while. DARPA for example, has been investing in research about brain-to-computers interface for years. And playing games has been part of the research projects. In this experiment two volunteers were connected to a flight simulator game. Take a look. And we connected them to the surface features of an aircraft within a flight simulator. And within minutes, both Nathan and Jan were able to fly through hoops and through the Grand Canyon and over and around the, the pyramids of uh, Egypt in the flight simulator. Um, and as you can see on this video on the right, Nathan was able to uh, not only direct a plane here at the center of the screen, but he was also able to control the behavior of these aircraft here at the top of the screen at the same time. So what we see here in this uh, first paradigm is the ability to use BCI signals uh, for low-level direct control of specific functions, uh, such as controlling a prosthetic limb or controlling a plane. And for some use cases, this is going to be the best uh, approach for users to interact with objects or to interact with the world. Um, there are some limitations associated with this control uh, related to the user's attention and the amount of information that we can collect from the neural interface, the signal bandwidth. The problem for these kinds of experiments is that they require the patients to have an intrusive and very visible device placed on their head. Only a few weeks before Neuralink presented the monkey experiment, BrainGate, a clinical research center within Brown University, announced that they were able to produce the same kind of experiments that DARPA carried out, again with humans, but with a simpler system, and the system is becoming similar to the Neuralink architecture. I, it is, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. In the new design of the BrainGate device, the cables are gone. They are replaced instead by a wireless transmitter, also positioned on the head of the patient, near the implant. The transmitter is about 2 inches in its largest dimension and weigh a little over 1.5 ounces. The unit sits on top of a user's head and connects to an electrode array within the brain's motor cortex, using the same port used by wired systems. Here are the comments from Lee Hochberg, the leading researcher at BrainGate. Happy to report that that cable, big cable, is no longer required. It can be replaced by something much smaller that can be placed on top of a head uh, connected to that pedestal. This is a wireless transmitter that we've been using recently, and that no longer needs to be placed by us on the research team. It can be and has been placed by caregivers, allowing our participants who are interested in doing so to use the system at times in their own home, even when we're not really engaged in our research uh, session, but instead uh, allowing them to, uh, to use the system and importantly to give us feedback. The new device offers also larger bandwidth and so it allows the user to interact with different type of applications within a device. And again, the inputs come from a human, not a monkey. This gentleman uh, in the lower part of the screen laying on his right side, uh, this is a fluorescent orange neck pillow that you're looking at. And really blurry here is one of these devices, that is one of these uh, uh, small wireless transmitters attached to the pedestal uh, on the top of his head, uh, using that tablet computer much the same way he might have uh, run his own hand over that tablet and tapped on the icons uh, prior to his injury. For the benefits of the individuals that cannot communicate, it is important to note that the two systems are not competing, but converging. In fact, Neuralink supports BrainGate, and they cooperate by sharing data. Take a listen. Mass General has a clinical research support agreement with uh, three companies that are, rele that are uh, relevant uh, in this space, if not more, uh, which includes Neuralink, as you just mentioned, Paradromics, and Synchron. The, uh, so I'm uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity to interact with them every so often through the hospital because what we're learning in our BrainGate research, I, I want them to know uh, because just as you said, uh, the, uh, with their budgets, with their corporate ability to be defining a system and moving it forward, 
I want them to learn and to know and to not have to learn everything that we've learned over the course of the trial. Uh, this is what publicly funded research is supposed to be from the Department of Veterans Affairs, from, uh, from the NIH, from, from philanthropy. We should learn as much as we can. And if we can hand that off to allow industry to define the product that will, uh, that will appear, uh, that's, uh, that's what we want. And so the next evolution is exactly what Musk and Neuralink had envisioned, a full invisible implant. Final step, not the one that we're at today, but already working in the university research lab is a fully implanted system. That's where medical devices need to go. But in order to get there, we need the ongoing input from people who are enrolled in the trial, telling us what works, telling us what we need to continue to work on. And, uh, and undoubtedly, these will be fully implanted devices in the uh, hopefully not too distant future.